This week's Haftorah is the Haftorah of Shkalim. It's a special Haftorah that is read every year at this time. And the reason is because in the time of the Beis HaMikdash, in the time of the Holy Temple, it was this time of year that they would request from all the Jewish people to give a half a dollar to the Holy Temple. As the Torah says, regardless how rich you were or poor you were, each one had the obligation to give a half a dollar to the Holy Temple. And this was used to buy the daily sacrifices in the Beis HaMikdash, the morning sacrifice and the evening sacrifice. Today that there is no Holy Temple, we pray the Shacharit, the morning service, and then the Mincha service in the evening. We even have a third service, the Maidiv service, which represents the flesh and the fats that were offered all night on the altar, and therefore we dive in the Maidiv service. So nowadays, every year this time, we read the Parsha of Shkalim to remind us that this was the time of year that we gave a half a dollar to the Holy Temple. Now, in the Haftorah, we talk about King Yehoyosh. King Yehoyosh was the eighth king from the kings of Judah. In other words, after the kingdom was split in Israel, there were two kingdoms. There was the kingdom of Yehuda, the kingdom of of Israel or Ephraim, and Jehoiash was the eighth king in the line from Judah. He reigned from the year 3061 to the year 3100 on the Jewish calendar. He was a king for 40 years. In other words, he reigned approximately 2700 years ago. Now, Yehoyash reigned at the age of seven. What happened was that his grandmother, the queen mother Atalia, killed out all the successors of her family, and she usurped the throne. The Koyin Godel at that time, Yehoyada and his wife, saved Yehoyash, and they hid him upstairs of the Holy Temple in the Holy of Holies. In other words, in the Holy of Holies, there were two floors. There was the lower floor where the high priest would go in every year in Yom Kippur. And then there was a duplicate Holy of Holies right on top of that. And that was the room where they hid Yehoyash for six years until he was fit to become king. So, the Haftorah begins with Vayichres Yoyada, that Yoyada made a pact with God, with the king, with Israel, that he removed all the idols from the land of Israel, and they established Yehoyash as the king. The Torah goes on to say that Yehoyash did Hayashar Be'ini Hashem, he did that which was right, he did the right thing in the eyes of God all the days that his teacher and the high priest Yehada was alive. Now, <clears throat> it's interesting to note, from here we see a very powerful thing. It was only until his teacher remained alive, but after his teacher died, he too did not continue to follow in the ways of God. From here we see the power and the importance of what it says in Ethics of Our Fathers, Asei Lechorav, that each person needs to make for himself a teacher, a mentor, a rabbi. And even a king, Yehoyosh, and other kings of Israel always had the prophets and the teachers that guided them and taught them how to be. And even a rabbi needs a rabbi. Every person needs a mentor. And that is the message here in the Haftarah, that Yehoyash did that which was correct in the eyes of God all the days that his teacher Yehoyada was alive. After his teacher died, he thought he was a god. He became a god. 
because the leaders of Judah told him, look, you were in the Holy of Holies six years, and you lived upstairs from the Holy of Holies. Now, you know how holy the Holy of Holies is? If a Kohen Gadol, if a high priest went into there and he was not pure from sin, he would die that year or even on the spot. And yet you survived the six long years in that location. You must be a god. And so he wanted people to serve him as a god. And that was the sin of Yehoyash in his later years. And again, we see the importance to have a teacher, a mentor to keep you humble and to keep you on the straight path. It's interesting to note that Yehoyash is also mentioned in the book of Chronicles. However, in the book of Chronicles, he is mentioned without the letter He. Rather, he is only called Yoyash. And our rabbis explain that the word Yoyash without the letter He means from the word Yosh. In other words, to despair, to give up. Because when he was born, the people of Israel gave up on the lineage from King David. And thank God he was spared, and eventually he became the king. But to remind us of this historical event, to remind us how the throne was usurped by Atalia, he is called Yosh, he is called the spear. However, here in the book of Malachim, the book of Kings, he is called Yehoyash with the letter He. As our rabbis tell us to imply that the name of God was with him. The He of the letter of God's name, Yud, He, and Vav, and He, the letter He was together with him. As we stated earlier that Yehoyash did that which was good in the eyes of Almighty God. On the first of Adar, there would be callers that would go to all the cities to call out and remind the Jewish people that they have to give half a dollar for the Holy Temple. The Haftorah tells us that the King Yehoyash used these half a dollar rather than using them for the purpose that the Torah desires, which is to buy the karbanot, to buy the daily sacrifices. He used it to repair the Holy Temple. The decision was made at that time, being that the temple was in terrible despair. It was destroyed. The walls were breached because Atalia wanted to destroy the temple. Therefore, he felt that the first and foremost obligation was to use the money now to rebuild and to beautify the holy temple. And that's what he did. And the rabbis supported this decision. But then we have the obvious question. Where do they have the daily sacrifices from? From where do they get that money? The Abarbanel tells us that people, Israelites, Jewish people, citizens, brought with them animals to the Beis HaMikdash. And therefore, they didn't have to buy the animals. They had the animals. That's one approach. Another approach is from the Radak, that being that the years before, they did not bring the half a dollars to the temple. Now they came not only with this year's half a dollars, but also half a dollars from previous years. And that is what they used to buy the daily sacrifices in the holy temple. Comes the question to mind, the obvious question. And that is today there is no holy temple. Yet we read the portion of Shekalim to remind us about the half a dollars, to create a yearning and a desire that the temple once again should be rebuilt. But yet, at the same time, it's a custom, it's brought down in the Code of Jewish Law, that every year, right before Purim, was supposed to give half a dollar. And so, before the reading of the Megillah, if you have not given yet the half a dollar, a plate is passed around, and people give half a dollar for tzedakah, for charity. Why do we give half a dollar today if there is no holy temple? Let us go back to the Talmud the Tractate of Megillah, page 13, side B. The Gemara says over there that Haman Harasha, the evil Haman, went to Ahasuerus, and he told Ahasuerus, Yeshnoi Amechod, 
There is a nation. And they are scattered amongst the nations of the world. But the king doesn't want them. I will give you 10,000 silver kikar and allow me to destroy them. Achashvero said, no problem, go ahead. Says the Talmud that God responded. Almighty God said, Haman, you think you could buy out my Jews? You think by giving shekalim, dollars, that's the way to destroy the Jewish people? I already forestalled these half a dollars. I commanded the Jews a thousand years earlier to give a half a dollar in the desert. And because of this, my half a dollars will negate and cancel out your half a dollars and your silver dollars. And therefore, they will be spared and they will be saved. We see here the power of the machzah shekel. We see the power of this mitzvah, of the half a dollars. And that is, it has the power to transform an evil decree into a good decree. Even though Haman wanted to wipe out the entire Jewish people, God forbid. And Haman is cursed. And Mordechai is blessed. Yet the way we were able to transform this negative into a positive was through the half a dollars. So the power of tzedakah, the power of charity is so great, it can transform negative into positive. Immediately we have a powerful message now at a time of a pandemic, COVID-19, that this terrible, terrible plague is destroying and tearing apart the world. Rahman al-Islam, young people, old people, are being taken away from us because of this terrible plague. And yes, there is a vaccine. But yet, people still seem to be passing away every day. We are reminded of the power of tzedakah. We are reminded of the power of the half a dollars to transform this evil decree and make it once again into a world that is sane and healthy and beautiful. At a time when there are no decrees, at a time when there are no pandemics, then the power of tzedakah, then the power of charity, then the power of this half a dollar is so great that it brings infinite blessings to the person that gives the tzedakah. So on one hand, we are giving a finite amount to tzedakah. You are giving one-tenth of your earnings, one-twentieth of your earnings. And God blesses you back with many, many more times of blessings with wealth, with health, with long life, and success, and all that you do. And these two concepts are hinted in the half a dollars, in the Torah, in the portion of Shekali. It says there that a person should give a half a dollar to the Holy Temple. These half a dollars were used when the Mishkan was built in the desert for two things. Number one, to build the Adonim, to build the silver sockets that held up the Qurashim, that held up the pillars in the Mishkan. These Adonim, these silver sockets, were made from the half a dollars. And number two, the half a dollars were also used to buy the daily sacrifice every year in the Holy Temple. So they would collect the money in the month of Adar, this month, and use the new money to start paying for the sacrifices in the month of Nisan, which is next month, which begins the first month on the Jewish calendar. Because on the Jewish calendar, we begin from the month of Nisan, that is the first month of the year. So this new half a dollars, this new money that came in, was used for the future budget for the future year. So the half a dollars play a double role. On one hand, it's used for the Adonim. On one hand, it was used to build the sockets. On the other hand, it was for sacrifices. The purpose of sacrifices is lechaper, is to atone for our sins, is to be forgiven for our mistakes, is to fix all the negative implications of the past. The power of, of Karbonus, the sacrifices, were to fix all the pandemics and to heal all those that were sick. So that was one aspect of the half a dollars. And then you have the other aspect of the half a dollars. And that was for the Adonim, for the sockets 
in the Holy Temple. The purpose of the Holy Temple was that the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, should come down and rest. That God himself, who is infinite, that is so great that the heavens cannot contain him, comes down and dwells in this small little building. Because this small little building, this Mishkan, this Beis Amikdash, is truly infinite. It has the power to bring down the Divine Presence. It has the power to bring down the Shekhinah. It has the power to bring down the infinite light into this world. And so therefore, the Adonim and the Karbanis, these two concepts, represent the giving of the half a dollars every year. It is true that, unfortunately, there is no temple today. But yet we continue to give the Shkalim, we continue to give the half dollars in the spirit of tzedakah, in the spirit of charity. And through this, number one, we are atoned for our sins, for our mistakes, for our shortcomings, for our flaws. And number two, it brings God's infinite blessing, God's Shekhinah, into the world. And therefore, we hope and pray by reading the parsha of Shkalim and by giving the Shkalim, this will give us all the blessings of the past and the future to remove all the negative implications, to remove all the pandemics, to remove all the plagues and all the negative decrees from this world, and at the same time to bring about God's light and goodness and kindness to transform negative into positive and to see the infinite blessing of Almighty God. To conclude with the following story. The holy Ruzhiner, Rabbi Sol of Ruzhin, was known to be a great tzaddik, a holy, a holy rabbi and a miracle worker. One day, he was visited by a father and a son, and they came to the holy Ruzhiner for a blessing. And as the father is speaking to the Ruzhiner, the child is walking around the room looking at the back of the Ruzhiner, looking behind the desk, and is making circles in the room. The Ruzhina called in his gabai, his assistant, and said to him, look, this young boy wants something. Perhaps he is hungry from his long trip. Maybe get him some cookies and milk. Ask him what he wants. And so the gabai calls over the young boy, the young lad, and says, how can I help you? I see you're very curious. You're looking around. Perhaps you want to eat something. The boy who is very intelligent, responds and says, no, I don't want cookies and milk. My father told me that we are going to visit a Malach Elikim, an angel of God. That the Ruzhina was truly not a human being. He was holy. He was an angel of God in a physical body. And so... My father always told me that an angel has wings. And therefore, I was looking behind the desk to see where the wings of the Ruzhina was. As we read in the Torah on the portion of Yisrael, that the angels had six wings. I was looking for the six wings of the Ruzhina. The Gabe goes back to the Rebbe and tells him what the boy said. The Rebbe tells the Gabbai, go back to the boy and tell him the following. He should go into the next room where my six sons are studying the Torah and he will see my six wings. My dear friends, we all have wings. The Alter Rebbe tells us that when we do a mitzvah with love and awe of God, we have wings. And these wings elevate the mitzvah and bring the mitzvah before Almighty God. And so when we give tzedakah, and when we pray, and when we learn Torah, it's important that we do it with love and awe of Almighty God. And by doing so, we will create the wings on each and every mitzvah. And we hope and pray that these mitzvahs will truly go before Almighty God, before the heavenly throne, and plead before Almighty God to bring only good and health and blessing to Am Yisrael, to B'nai Yisrael, to the children of Israel, to the nation of Israel. And these blessings will spread forth throughout all the nations of the world to bring unity, health, and blessing to the entire globe. We hope and pray to see a month of joy. As it says, when the month of Adar arrives, 
We have to increase in joy, and through joy we break through all boundaries. So say l'chaim, give tzedakah, be happy, dance a little bit. And together with this joy, as the Rebbe has told us, that the word Mashiach is sameach yud, when a Jew is joyous with all eser koiches and nefesh, with all ten levels of the body and soul, the three intellectual faculties and seven emotional faculties, through this, we will break through the walls of exile with the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days.